Tanaka. Here we go. There it is. <laughs> so Adam Wojcicki versus uh, Lucas Lopez. Oh, Lorat. excuse me. Lu Lucas Lopez. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So Lucas Lorat coming out. A competitor from Arizona. He's had, a, he's had some pretty close matches with the likes of Heisen Rita. Yeah. Um, we'll see how he does here. He's going to need to be very careful versus the butterfly game. He's taking a little bit of an interesting approach. Well, Adam, Adam for me is, uh, he's one of the top black belts in, in the division. You know, he's hit the podium at pretty much every major tournament in the world. The gold medal is always right there in his grasp, but he's often, it's often just slipped through his fingers as a result of meeting athletes such as Kainan Duarte or sort of sometimes Gustavo Batista, some big names such as that. But Adam is very, very capable. Adam is a, uh, a very calculated uh, competitor. He's that cool Polish demeanor, I think is the <laughs> best way to describe it. You know, he's, he's a very conservative kind of individual in his approach to jiu-jitsu, but he has well, he's pretty much the only modern butterfly guard player, right? Yeah, I would say so. And, you know, he, he just makes it work so well. And he, he has instructionals out there about uh, his the way he does it. He breaks it down simply. I even have students in my own academy like, hey, have you seen uh, Wardzinski's instructionals? And I'm like, man, now I got it. So it's, it's a very, it's a very uh, fundamental understanding he has over the butterfly guard. And you see him right here. Like, he ended up on top, and it immediately put him in this tight, position to slowly fight for his underhook which is one of the main tenets of butterfly guard is that upon successfully butterfly guard sweeping you usually end up in a tight position and we see that right here Wardzinski just biding his time slowly trying to wade through the guard of Lucas Norat Lucas doing a good job getting himself back in the game he's not he's not giving up the pass he's getting his legs back in front of him yeah Norat is playing a uh pretty good half guard game here but the problem is it's his grip of the leg is so low and as you can see that just enables Wodzinski to drive his knee through into this like three-quarter mount and this is as good as past this is he just has to slip just has to slip his ankle free and he's gonna get four points well seven points three for the pass and, and four for the mount yeah and Lucas Rodgers uh, got a penalty there for Grabbing the inside of the gi, cannot grab. It's one of the ways you can get penalized in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in the IBKJF rule set. Oh, grab look at that pressure. Look at that pressure. Double underhooks there on top from uh, from Adam Wodzinski. You've got the far side underhook, and he's keeping that near side elbow elevated as well. And that's a pretty miserable place to be stuck. Absolutely, it's uh, it's really difficult because to defend your guard, you need to have the ability to use your hips and. When you have double underhooks, your chest is completely compromised and you are unable to use your elbows, your hands. You can't push anybody down lower. It's just all over you. And it is very, very difficult to stop. And I believe that Adam Wardzinski has no reason to let go of this double underhook. He can stay just continuing to try to pass this guard for as long as this match has regulation. Now into the mount, that is going to be seven more points for Adam Wardzinski. Now a gigantic lead, still with the double underhooks in the mount. It's going to be very difficult for Narat to stop any, any attack here. Wardzinski uh, has a lot of his disposal. so calm and so in control. He doesn't even look like he's got out of first gear. And I think that that is a testament to sort of how he approaches jiu-jitsu like you were talking about before. He's very calm. He, ha he, he knows how to set up his attacks and to set up his traps. And once he has you in the trap, then he can slowly and methodically work toward the finish. Love watching this. A real case study in, in top pressure here. I like the way that Adam Wozinski is controlling those elbows so effectively, keeping such separation between the elbows and the torso. Norad is in real trouble here. This is uh, 
very reminiscent of watching Gordon Ryan in the Nokia, who's number one recently, the way that he was able to, from the mount, keep those elbows so high up next to his opponent's head, and ultimately it just offers so many attacks. And that's yeah. what Adam's doing right here. Dropping off to, moving up into the S mount, I should say, but keeping his hips so low and, but still stays, stays pretty mobile in that position, you noticed? Absolutely, and I think that that's one of the cool things that you just brought up, Gordon. Uh, that's uh, it's a it's a fundamental principle that is present in both gi and no gi. It's more of just a, a rudimentary jujitsu principle: is keeping your elbows, keeping your opponent's elbows away from their body, makes them weaker. And Gordon did that to great effect in, in the recent who's number one that you were talking about. In so much that he put pressure to force a tap, and you see Adam Wardzinski here, uh, Lucas Norat have being forced to turn away due to the pressure, and. Uh, in both Ryan and Wardzinski's case, it's a very, very effective way to isolate somebody from the mount, and uh, it just nets you so many possibilities to finish the match. Yeah, that's not a good place to be. Not a good place to get stuck whatsoever. and 30 seconds left for Adam Wardzinski to work, now feeding the lapel around. This really is just a, a great study guide for any person who wants to get better at top pressure. Watch this match. And you will get a, you'll get a, a good idea of what it looks like to have a great idea of how to completely isolate somebody. And as we say that... Oh, Adam looking to get the hook in now. I think they're going to get reset, but no, actually the referee's letting them go because that collar grip is very much uh, active. Nice work here from Adam Wardzinski and just using the one hook to control his opponent. Norad really has very little uh, chance of escape from this position. Oh, Adam gives up his hooks. But I think we could see him even drop off for a collar choke here because he set his grips before removing his hooks. Yeah, now pulling him back. In the ah, middle. now and he lets go. This has all been, I feel, a ploy to get the choke deeper, like as we see now. Like oh, yeah. Every bit of movement that we've seen out of Adam Wardzinski in taking the back here has all been as a means to an end. It's all been as a means to get a choke going, whether it's forcing Norat to focus on the hooks that he just got back in yet again, or forcing him to think about his positioning on the mat. Wardzinski has been focused on one goal, and that is to submit from the back. Just all over him at this stage. Oh, hard to see exactly from this angle. I think he's going for the Ezekiel from the back here. Yes, he is. It's not quite in the right position. A little high. Norat's doing a good job of keeping his shoulders shrugged and keeping his chin down, but... Look at the awareness, the mat awareness of Adam Bordzinski. He actually brought his opponent back into the blue rather than let him go out and then, you know, have to restart in the center. And now, 17 points to zero. Full mount once again. Well, at this point, it's, it's not uh, befitting of Adam Wardzinski to give Nora any, any break, right? Like, the match no, has one minute not. left. Why go out of bounds and force a reset and go through all that? 24 points to zero. Well, so far, it has been the Adam Wardzinski show. Looking oh, to potentially look the finish with the switch armbar. There it is. Gets the tap with... That's it, 